Hi, welcome to another edition of Exile TV. In this edition, it's another Junos video. We're going to talk about upgrading an SRX appliance or Junos based appliance, uh, whether it's a J series router, or M series router, or SRX. The process isn't too different, but uh, in this case, we're going to use an SRX uh, 210 uh, firewall device. So, I received a request on the YouTube channel for Exile TV by, uh, by a viewer who wanted to know what the best way was to uh, back up his SRX device. Uh, this isn't exactly uh, an episode I'm backing up, uh, but uh, we do cover upgrading. It's very similar, so I can talk a little bit about backing up. You can see here that I'm logged into the SRX device here. This is our lab SRX. And there's two ways to upgrade the SRX. It depends on how you have your SRX set up. If you have the GUI turned on, you can upgrade through the GUI. There's a couple options. If you if you don't have the GUI enabled, I don't have the GUI enabled on any of, of my devices for security reasons, <clears throat> and also because the functionality is limited through the GUI compared to what you can do via the command line. So what I do is first I download the package that I want to upgrade to. In this case, this box is running. This box is running, as you can see, it's running Juno's 10.0 R210 which is a fairly recent uh, release of uh, 10.0. I think it's a <clears throat> it was released in December. And since this is a lab box, I'm going to take this device from 10.0 R210 all the way to 10.1, which was just released uh, last month, this month. Um, so it'll give us a good demonstration. Now, because I am not using the GUI, I upgrade this device by copying the file using SCP. If you have a Mac or a Unix box, you can SCP the file over. Or you can win SCP the file if you're on a Windows device. And I store it in var temp. So I've already SCP'd this file. So if you go to var temp, you'll see there's my file there at the top, Junos SRX ME 10.1 R 1.8 domestic. It's domestic, so it has all the encryption, the nice, the nice goodies you don't get uh, internationally. <clears throat> now, you see I have some other packets there. Uh, I have some other, excuse me, files there for different things. If you're running a, a, a packet uh, filter that samples packets to files and other things like that, it'll dump it in this directory. This directory also doesn't hang around long. Uh, it can be uh, wiped to free space, so just because you reboot it, it may not be there anymore. But generally I put my packages in var temp. One of the uh, users on the YouTube channel was asking how to back up his device. Well, if you have upgraded the device yourself <clears throat> and you've copied the file over to a specific directory, then the file is there. If, however, you've upgraded the device through the GUI, typically it has an option not to save a backup of the file. If that's the case, it doesn't save a backup of the file, the, the package that is on there. And if you've done uh, the upgrade to the GUI, then there really is no way to get the package file back from what you have because it untars it and it untars it into several different files. You could theoretically compress that back, but um, I haven't seen too much uh, success with that. So what I would recommend if you are going to do this is that you upgrade through the command line. Now you can still back up the device if you upgrade through the GUI, but what you have to do is stick in a USB thumb drive that is compatible and you do a, a install format to the external media and I can show you how to do that in this upgrade process because it's one of the options. And that'll give you basically a bootable USB stick that the SRX will boot to like it's a, like it's the internal flash, but it it's not a specific package file that you can take and then um, dump on another device <clears throat> like you could the original package file. So I hope that answers the backing up of, of SRX devices. Let's go with the upgrade. So you see I have my file here, so I'm going to start the CLI. And what we have to do is we have to do this command, request system software. And then I'm going to, I'm going to show you the options here. You see there's a bunch of options. What we want to do is want to add, we want to show the file, right? So I'm going to do slash var slash temp. And um, I hit a typo here. You, I'm going to search for slash var slash temp. Uh, slash and if I hit J I can tab to complete it already knows the files there another interesting thing too is that the GUI is pretty smart so if I do var temp question mark it'll show me all the completions there so it, it knows what's in there which I think is pretty cool but anyways I'm gonna do var temp hit the question mark again 
I do a no validate typically uh, because uh, it's easier that way. Some things can um, cause it not to validate, but when you actually do the update, there's not a problem. Um, so I typically put no validate just to save many issues because I know that my configuration is compatible with this version of Junos. There's a couple options you have here. Um, you can do uh, a no copy, which does not uh, save copies of the package file. You can do a no validate, which we did. Uh, you can tell it to partition and format your media. So what we're going to do here is leave the no validate. Uh, you can also unlink the file, which means that it'll remove the package file after successful installation. That's typically what happens when you install through the GUI. Um, then you can tell it to reboot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the no validate and I'm just going to do a reboot at the end because we're going to need to reboot and we're off to the races. So this is going to take, this process is pretty lengthy. It can take anywhere of uh, 10 minutes to 30 minutes, sometimes even 40 minutes depending on which version you're upgrading. The 9.6 code takes a lot longer to upgrade. And hopefully if there's no issues with my system, any compatibility issues, it should run through the installing package and rebooting device fairly quickly. You probably want to have console access to the device. You probably do not want to do this remotely. Um, I wouldn't anyways. Uh, <laughs> I, I've had, I usually have uh, two or three of these boxes laying around and I'll drop the config on a box from a remote site, put the latest file, ship it out, have them ship me back the the uh, the older device which I'll then upgrade in my lab put in my lab put somebody else's config on it ship it out to that office that's typically how I upgrade my offices especially the international offices now and that's if they're a really small remote office five users ten users we have absolutely no IT people uh, you're gonna be stuck doing something like that um, it's probably not the most cost-effective way to do it but it is the safest uh, especially if you're not on site And here you'll see it started to jump along, verified the file, available space is good, saving boot file package, it'll also upload whatever bootloader needs, and um, saving the package in uh, var software package. Because I told it not to unlink and no copy, so it's going to save a copy. Now, if you, like I said earlier, for the gentleman that was asking about backups, depending on how you upgrade it, um, the file may or may not be in a VAR software package so typically I don't save a copy I unlink it and I delete it but uh, this time um, because this uh, version is so new and I haven't gone to this uh, platform yet I have decided to as a precaution leave the older file there and to not unlink this one uh, to make it easier to roll back here you'll see it's uh, going down for a reboot now and it's uh, saving the state for rollback in case the uh, installation does not work correctly and uh, hopefully when this thing reboots uh, we'll, we'll see something uh, interesting okay it looks like it is uh, back up took a little while to reboot there but no harm no foul we're back in the box let's uh, go into the CLI we want to do a show system software detail want to make sure we're on the right we're on 10.1 R1.8 that's good that means the upgrade was successful and let's just do some basic troubleshooting to make sure everything is good let's do a show chassis routing engine make sure that looks good and let's make sure one of the things that um, in past uh, in past versions of this OS on this box um, The um, what am I doing? Just a little bit of a typo there. Okay, this is the main thing I wanted to make sure that the state of the pick was online because the um, in previous uh, upgrades this takes up to 10 minutes for this pick to come online and since it's fully online it means we're passing traffic so let's do show routes, the routes look good um, there we go 
So that was the upgrade. Now I want to show you how to create a backup bootable drive just in case something happens you can ship out to one of these sites and you do that by doing request I want to show you how to create a backup to a USB drive in case you have an issue and need to boot to this in a remote office later or in case you just want a backup of your device that you can boot to in case you accidentally clear damage or corrupt the internal device the way you would do that is by issuing the following command request system snapshot okay now once you're here you would tell you want to partition that means format create all new partitions you would select media USB that's all there is to it press